A very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we're the team from Sri Lanka representing the University of Colombo. And uh, we're here today to present our findings and our analysis on the case given to us. Um, I am Harini, and I will be doing the start, and which will be followed by the second speaker, Dasun. He will look into the analysis that we've done, followed by Chatura, who will be the third speaker. He will be speaking about the issue identification and prioritization, followed by Danisha, who will be talking about the resources and capabilities and match them with the options that the organization has to choose from. And finally, I will present you with a business solution and do the winding up with conclusion. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, we've been handed a case uh, about a company that is loved by some and hated by some. And their slogan was to have a PC on every desk. And we know the desks are getting smaller, the houses are getting smaller. People do not have time to sit in front of their PCs anymore. They're carrying laptop, they're carrying tablets, they're carrying mobile phones. They're doing everything that a laptop can do on the palm of their hand. But has Microsoft realized that? Have they achieved what they're supposed to achieve? And we have a question there, and throughout our analysis, we've tried to figure out where they're heading, what they're doing wrong, what they're doing right. So we will present you first with the analysis. But before that, let's just do a briefing into the case study that we have. Um, it's about Microsoft, and there is a big change. There is a new uh, CEO coming into play. Um, there is also a lot of transformation going on, a lot of structural change. Um, and they are trying to find an edge in the ever so dynamic market of mobile applications and software. But there are so many players ahead of them. And how do, does Microsoft, a legend, a uh, well-known name, keep their competitive advantage intact and provide the customers with the top-notch, uh, over-the-top, over-the-edge technology and software solutions? So that is what we're trying to um, analyze and come to a conclusion on. So we will swiftly move on to the first half of our presentation, that is the analysis. Yeah, thanks, Harini. Uh, let, me let me continue with the analysis of this case. Yeah, for this analysis, it will be used, the search analysis as displayed here. Uh, which will be uh, consisting of strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities and threats, and uh, which will be uh, used to analyze the internal and external factors of the organization. So, the first thing is strengths. Okay, the first one is our strength is mobile capability. What it will be? Uh, what is mean? What is the meaning of this mobile capability with related to Microsoft? Here, they have already acquired. The Nokia, uh, so which has the mobile capability. So that's why we're saying uh, mobile capability as a strength. And the next thing is the best cash package. What the best cash package means? Microsoft is offering the best cash package to their st stakeholders, and it is the most attractive uh, one in 2011 when comparing with other software companies in the play. And the next thing is the financial dividends. Still, they are continuing with the consistent financial dividends for their stakeholders, for their shareholders. So it is also, it is also a strength. And the next thing is network and human resources. Actually, Microsoft, ha Microsoft has their network in over 100 countries. And when, when uh, considering its human resources, they have over 100,000 staff all over the world. So that's uh, that is so so that is also a strength so the next thing is software related acquisitions uh, at the moment though uh, they have already unsuccessful in software non software related acquisitions they have already continued their success in software related acquisitions so we are moving on to the weaknesses the first thing is office politics so uh, at the moment in Microsoft according to the analysis, uh, there the office politics means there are so many bureaucratic uh, bureaucratic environment in uh, Microsoft. So it's uh, it's a problem and uh, it it is uh, a cause to uh, demotivation of the employees in Microsoft. And at the same time, slow adaptability. Uh, at the moment, uh, there's a merger with Nokia. So uh, they have to, they have uh, two cultures. So to adapt to one culture, there's a problem. So that's why they are, so we are saying it's a slow adapt slow adaptability. Then at at the moment, uh, 
there's a problem in the organizational, stru organizational structure also with this merger. And, and then the opportunities. Yeah, we're saying uh, it's a skilled labor force. Uh, both uh, in the external environment as well as they have skilled labor force in Nokia also. So Microsoft can use this as an opportunity to uh, go ahead and to improve ahead. At the same time, uh, now it's time of trends. Observances of, observances of PCs. Now the use of uh, personal computers is going to outdate. Now then we are now uh, the the customers are using the tablets, the smartphones. So uh, it will be untracked uh, because these options of PCs, no more use of uh, personal computers. So the risk of merger then. Now uh, Microsoft has only merged with Nokia. Then uh, the employees of Nokia may have some uh, confusions about the culture and the beliefs about how, how uh, we can adapt to uh, Microsoft. Sometimes they may leave the organization with this merger. So it's also a threat. So uh, the third one, losing the rank. According to the ranking of best companies worked for, uh, Microsoft had 8th place, but uh, in 2013, it uh, folded, it, fo it fell to uh, 75th. So they are going to lose their edge and according to the competing top-notch talent. So uh, let me continue, let me pa pass the uh, presentation to no. Thank you. Now, now let's move into the one of the most important parts in our analysis. That is identification of issues. In the case given to us, we have identified a lot of issues. But based on impact and urgency analysis, we have identified three main issues. We are addressing the most important issue that's ranked as A, the first one. The inadequate innovation, creativity, and slow adaptability. Because of this problem Microsoft has faced lot of issues they have lost their market growth customer base and they have all also lost their stock market value as doesn't doesn't mention they have lost their uh, market share as well as the customer base they ha have had in the uh, past decade and also they have uh, they had the cost, uh, competitors like Samsung, App, Apple, and Asus, the major players in tablet market and mobile uh, production market, has overtaken their customer base, and as well as the they have expanded the uh, product diversification because of the ad adaptability uh, slowness of the slowness of the Microsoft all the other competitors had taken the competitive advantage of that. By considering all those issues, is issues Microsoft has lost their revenues. Now let's move into the next part of our presentation. The next part of our presentation is to identify the options and capabilities. As identified in the SWOT analysis, we uh, uh, Microsoft possesses these type of capabilities, especially acquired mobile capability after having acquired Nokia, and also best cash package and constant dividends, which also says that they are more concerned about their shareholder wealth maximization and also increased price as, um, as proposed by Nadal. This uh, new CEO, uh, his, uh, he proposes to uh, continue uh, move the entire organization restructuring and he uh, loves to undertake adaptation. So uh, these are the main uh, capabilities that we that the Microsoft possess. However, when uh, going back to our key issues identified by the previous speaker, we identified the fact that they lack uh, competitive edge. So this is the main Thing, so that uh, they have to have better innovation, creativity in order to enhance their competitive edge and to get best use of their capabilities. So identifying all these, we can next move on to the options available for the Microsoft. So uh, when identifying all these options, one major one option available is to continue the current status quo. Because uh, even the pre when previous CEO was retiring, 
he uh, reported he had reported high revenue for the company so that they can uh, simply keep on doing what they're doing because they have Nokia being acquired so that uh, they can probably look into synergistic benefits out of it and also but there's a risk risk side or downside of this op option that is uh, we can identify it as there will be no innovation no creativity no growth prospect they will be uh, they will they can only on the survival basis so uh, the other option that is available is to implement a cultural and structural change because uh, this actually we can uh, uh, analyze using uh, su uh, suitability feasibility and acceptability so why are we saying that this is suitable because implementing a cultural change means this is what the new ceo is looking forward to do because that will be uh, acceptable for the shareholders and also when it comes to feasibility of this option as we all know uh, microsoft is a huge company anyway and also as we computed the, their revenue has been increased from 23 percent when it comes to 2013 so that this surely has the uh, they has surely has the capability or the inadequate capital to undertake all these structural changes that they are looking forward to do. So in terms of acceptability, uh, if they can go for a proper structure of the organization, surely and thereby to maximize their revenue, surely that will be acceptable to shareholders and other stakeholders. But there is a risk aspect involved in this regard that is in terms of employees. Because such changes, structural changes are very sensitive when it comes to the employees. So that, that risk aspect they have to consider in case if they are going ahead with this particular option. However, our next step is to match our capabilities with our options. So these are like match made in heaven. We, uh, based on our capabilities, we propose to uh, go ahead with the second option that we mentioned. That is to implement a cultural and a structural change. Just like a, a better marriage can result in a beautiful child, this will give a good business solution. That is to achieve cultural change through restructuring and promote innovation and collaboration, which will be further elaborated by the next speaker. Okay, um, so, so far we've identified the issues that we are facing and it is now up to me to provide you with a business solution. So this is a gist of what is going to happen, what we are proposing that Microsoft undertakes. Um, so first, we're looking at the business solution and the strategy under that. So what is the strategy that we are suggesting? We are suggesting that they move uh, into a restructurization of the company uh, from product-based to function-based, which they have suggested in the case, and we agree with that. Why? Because it makes sense. It's more practical. It also encourages all the other aspects of collaboration and innovation that we will uh, present to you for when we further move on. Um, then they have to. There's a complete overhaul, change of culture. There, at present, the status quo of the company is such that there is a lot of bureaucratic uh, management styles, um, there is close to policies, there is a disparity between the old guys and the new guys. So there is a lot of uh, things going on which has resulted in a lot of uh, office politics um, and bureaucracy. So what we're suggesting is, uh, we've used the Levin's uh, change man um, cultural change model, uh, where we've said under unfreeze, we have to unfreeze from the status quo. Microsoft has to unfreeze themselves from being a bureaucratic, um, culture, um, very performance driven yet very um, cliquish culture into something more democratic. So the change we are suggesting for this is a democratic culture um, and also decentralized decision making. As they've mentioned in the case that they're, pla they're planning on dividing the entire operations into four avenues. So that is a head start on this democratic uh, style of uh, democratic style of culture and also decentralized decision making but what we're saying is decentralize all the functions uh, according to the functional base but have uh, core supporting services like marketing and finance centralized why are we saying this we're saying this because 
those two supporting services need to have some sort of centralization in order to manage budgets and also in order to make sure that you have integrated communications strategy. You cannot have different avenues giving out different messages to customers and other stakeholders. So that is why we are uh, saying decentralized decision making, yet centralized the supporting services. And also integrate the shared values of Microsoft and Nokia. There is an acquisition uh, taking place or has taken place. So there is a huge cultural clash that Microsoft has to deal with. So that is why we're uh, saying to find the synergistic benefits of this acquisition and also to emphasize on the shared values that both the employees and the management of both companies can actually stand ground on and move forward smoothly. Um, then refreeze, we have seen, according to the case, there has been over five uh, changes into management and culture. So that is inconsistent. That creates confusion within the employees and the management. We don't want that anymore. So we're suggesting, what we're suggesting is that there is consistency. So you have to refreeze and make sure that this is long standing and this carries on to the future. We next move on to collaboration. Why is collaboration important? It is through collaboration that you can promote innovation. So we're suggesting to delegate authority, give people the authority to delegate and to take, make decisions and prove their creativity. Do not hold them back. So that is why we're suggesting to delegate authority. And most importantly, establish a two-way horizontal and vertical organizational wide communications, which results in an open door policy because it mentions that the old guys or the seasoned employees of Microsoft actually um, prevents the young guys from bringing out their opinions. So we don't want that. You know, if, if a company as dynamic, uh, if a company functioning in an industry as dynamic as the um, software and the mobile uh, uh, devices industry, you need to come up with something innovative. We're not putting uh, the matured uh, employees down, but what we're simply suggesting is that um, they actually give the other guys to come up with the ideas in order to uh, promote innovation and creativity. Um, and finally, uh, innovation to promote, uh, we have to promote, I'm sorry, Microsoft has to promote employer branding. Um, there is a lot of skilled talent uh, I, uh, out there, especially with uh, regards to the acquisition of Nokia as mentioned in the SWOT analysis. Um, but there is this one perception among the potential employees that Microsoft is a company which is hard to work with or hard to work in. So we have to um, kind of overcome that negativity and promote employee branding because it was once um, one of the top companies to work for. So we have to promote employee branding and make sure that we grab, uh, acquire and retain the best talent that is available in the market. Um, so that is the strategy. So how are we gonna operationalize it? Um, we next um, address the who, when, and communication parts of this plan. So who is responsible for this massive overhaul? obviously the top management starting from the CEO and then we move down to the functional heads because from here on it will be a functional based organization. So we have to make sure that each uh, head of every function is aware of the changes, is aware of the new acquisition, is aware that there are new people coming in from different cultural background into the cu culture of Microsoft. You have to accommodate everyone. You have to be flexible and also adapt. Um, when uh, we're suggesting that this um, strategy takes into implementation in the next um, 12 to uh, 24 months or one to two years. Um, this is implementation. So this is a long, a long term strategy. This is a complete overhaul at the strategic apex. Um, so you need time, but this time needs to be realistic as well. So since they have already acquired Nokia, uh, they have gotten through that. But it's just a matter of operationalizing and make sure that all of the uh, blocks fit into each other. Um, and communication, this is very, very important because cultural change is very sensitive as the uh, previous speaker mentioned. So we're suggesting proper internal communications where nothing, uh, it's very open and it's very transparent and also everyone is aware of what is happening because then there is the, you create a sense of inclusiveness um, in the employees. So you want that. And then there, there should be proper change management mechanisms in place where you uh, ideally at the end of the day you have to uh, convert the opposers of this idea into either neutrals or to supporters. So by the end of that, especially the matured uh, the, or the seasoned employees of Microsoft will be the opposers to this. So these people will have to be converted into supporters in order to maximize the benefits of this strategy. And also internal marketing is very important because it's going to be functional based, so each and every function will be a customer of the other function. Um, so to round up the presentation, really quickly. This is what we've been looking at. We're looking at Microsoft restructuring itself. 
implementing a big cultural change in order to achieve collaboration and through that improve their innovation and creativity and at the end of the day gain the competitive advantage that they once had but they're losing currently. So what we want Microsoft is to be in the same caliber as Apple, Samsung and the other lights because they have the capabilities and the resources as mentioned by our previous speaker. It's just a matter of uh, differentiating your thinking and different uh, thinking in a different line and uh, changing the culture that is preventing them from doing great things. So that is our presentation and thank you very much.
change um, their end product. And like you mentioned, they have um, uh, access to over 100 countries. They have people over 100 countries. So it, it will be a gradual implementation of this. Um, it will start from uh, where it, it's a quarter in, and then it will be a gradual rollout plan. Um, and then it has to be um, a slow uh, rollout within to be implemented within the next one to two years. Um, yeah. It is actually implementation should be taking place within the next one to two years. Now that they will have to complete the entire because it is not the one day or two day process, it's a continuous step by step process. One to two years sounds quite quick to me. Um, how are we going to, we, we say there's a bit of a dearth of innovative talent within the, within the company. How are we going to attract innovators when we're down at 75 in the most exactly. popular uh, companies to work for? What, what, if I was at the top of my class, why would I not? Why would I go to Microsoft, where it is currently, rather than go and join Apple? Um, they're currently they're, they've been in the game for so long, and they're currently the best. Uh, they, in terms of uh, offerings, they're at the top of their game. Um, and also, due to the simple fact that they have a good standing reputation in terms of surviving throughout maybe the crises that have come and gone, and also throughout the tech uh, revolutions, so they've stood their ground, and that should be emphasized in their employer branding. We couldn't, we didn't have time to actually go into minute details into the employer branding aspect of the strategy. Um, so if we had done that, I think it would have been clear that
that they have the best software um, and also uh, the fact that they have been successful in software acquisitions. Um, but um, um, and also the fact that Nokia um, has uh, a reputation as uh, one of the long-standing hardware uh, mobile providers. Um, and that core branding, I think, is crucial in terms of creating a competitive edge um, in order to make sure that their uh, share of market is not affected by competitors, but actually grow in the long term. That so how would you convince manufacturers to say,